Behold, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son into the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, in this final day of the Advent season, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to, to Almighty, Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have, have greatly sinned, sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Come quickly, we pray, Lord Jesus, and do not delay, that those who trust in your compassion may find solace and relief in your coming, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, here I am living in a house of cedar while the ark of God dwells in the tent. Nathan answered the king, go do whatever you have in mind for the Lord is with you. But that night, the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, go tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, should you build me a, throw, a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people, Israel. I have been with you wherever you went and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. And I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old, since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest <clears throat> with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make him kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and I shall be a son, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever. Before me, your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Response oral psalm. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever, forever I will sing, sing the goodness, goodness of the Lord. The favors of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations, my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven, you have confirmed your faithfulness forever. forever I, will I will sing, sing the, goodness the goodness of the Lord. Lord. I have made a covenant with your chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant, forever will I confirm your posterity 
and establish your throne for all generations. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. He shall say of me, you are my Father, my God, the Rock, my Savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness toward him, and my covenant with him stands firm. Forever For I, will I will sing, sing the goodness, goodness of, of the Lord. Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Zechariah, his father, filled with the Holy Spirit, prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hand of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In today's gospel, which was quite wordy, but we have just heard that in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. That refers to Jesus Christ, the radiant dawn, the Oriens, as the Latin text puts it. That is one of the exclamative names that the church uses to describe Christ in the last days running up to Christmas. Each day, a different name, a different title is used. And in their original Latin form, the first letters of each of these titles would form an acrostic, spelling Erocras, tomorrow, I will be, or tomorrow I will become, tomorrow I will be born. So let's talk about tomorrow. When God talks about doing something tomorrow, it doesn't mean that he's putting things off until tomorrow. He is making a promise about how imminent his action is going to be. Tomorrow, I will act. Tomorrow, you will see the glory of the Lord. Tomorrow, I will vanquish your enemies. And it should not surprise us that God makes us promises. God never seems to use the indicative tense. Maybe he does, but very, very rarely. He speaks mostly in promises and prophecies. Erocras, tomorrow I will be. When the Lord instituted the Jewish Passover, 
and commanded the people of Israel to sacrifice the lamb and prepare the Passover meal, he specified to them that they did not have time to allow the bread to rise, but that they would have to eat it unleavened. The rising of the dough takes one whole night. Yet that night would be the one in which God acted, and they would have to correspond to this intervention of God by fleeing. Christ will be born in the darkest, the most silent part of the night, the middle, tonight. Between now and then, we do not even have time to leaven bread. So we must prepare ourselves immediately, just like the ancient Israelites did before the Passover. We must correspond to the grace, the blessing of the birth of Christ that we are about to receive. If he says, tomorrow I will act, do I believe in his final victory? Do I trust him with all my life? Or do I trust myself more than him? Or do I going to go 50-50, give him some and keep some for myself? Tomorrow you will see the glory of the Lord. Am I looking forward to his coming? Or am I more distracted and worried about the logistics of Christmas and the minutiae? Martha, Martha, you must not neglect to prepare diligently, of course, a Christmas for your family, but to do so at the expense of giving the baby Jesus a place to warm himself in the depth of your heart would be a tragedy. We must correspond to the grace of Christmas by opening our hearts up. Tomorrow I will vanquish your enemies. It was on Christmas when St. Therese of Lisieux grew up and in one moment she abandoned her reckless childish mannerisms which had been holding her back. She could only do so because in that moment she received a grace from God. What vices or defects do we have that we wish we could be freed from? What is your Achilles heel? What is keeping you from giving yourself entirely to God? Let's bring this enemy of ours before God and ask him to vanquish it from our lives. If we do not ask, we cannot receive. If we do ask, we may receive in superabundance. Your prayer will be answered as he sees best according to his eternal design, but it will be answered and it will be answered tomorrow. Amen. My brothers and sisters, trusting in the love and mercy of our Lord, let us unite our hearts and minds and bring forth to God these petitions. For Francis, our Pope, for James, our Bishop, for all clergy and consecrated religious, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who govern us, that they may find ways to bring peace to the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the sick, the suffering, and the bereaved, and especially those who are going through times of trial this Christmas, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here today, and for all our parish community, that we may grow in faith, hope, and charity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And today we pray especially for Mark Ayers, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for the profound gift of your mercy and love 
Please help us by your grace and the intercession of your saints to return the gift of love to our neighbor and to you in all that we are and all that we do. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously make your own, O Lord, the offerings which we bring, that partaking of them we may be cleansed of our sins and merit to stand ready with pure hearts for the coming and glory of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Thank you. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples Say, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant to us who find new vigor, O Lord, in these your wondrous gifts, that as we prepare to celebrate in adoration the festivities of your Son's nativity, so we may possess in gladness his everlasting rewards, who lives and reigns forever and ever. 
Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.